people all over this world. Yeah, people all over this world. Say people all over this world, they're looking for Jesus. Hello, my friend. It's me, Bishop John R. Stevenson. And I'd like to welcome you to another edition of It's a Word Thing. Father, we come before you now in the name of Jesus, thanking you for today and for all that you've done in our life. We ask in the name of Jesus that by your spirit that you would move, give clear revelation to your people. Open the eyes of our understanding, Father, and allow us to see you clearly and to hear you more precisely. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. So my friends and family, it's good to be here with you again today. I want to be talking about a subject that the Holy Spirit has been really dealing with me about, and it's called doing it in the Spirit. Doing it in the Spirit. I've come to find out, my friends, that there are a lot of things that I really believe that the body of Christ understood, but I'm coming to see that there are still a lot of things that we don't understand as the body of Christ. And we can't share with the world something that we don't understand. So the Bible teaches us that we're supposed to have the answer for every person that comes and asks us. Why is it that we have this hope and glory? Why is it that we believe and trust in this God that most people say that we cannot even see or come in contact with? It's called doing it in the spirit. And so I want you to be prayerful as you uh, watch the, the broadcast. And I want you to follow me in the scriptures, my friends, so that truth can be revealed. My heart is really broken. Uh, I'm, I'm really hurting uh, because of where the church is. I'm not talking about the world, friend. I'm talking about where the church, the true church, where the church is right now. We are having problems with doing it in the spirit. We don't understand what that means. And so there's a fight in Christianity about what's truly the spirit and what's not the spirit. And so friends, I wanna to say to you that there's a very thin line between worship and witchcraft. And there's a lot of witchcraft going on in the church. We're calling it worship. We're calling it spirit. We're saying that it's the move of the Holy Spirit. Friend, it's the move of the spirit, but it's not the move of the Holy Spirit. There are so many things going on in the church today that really, really is uh, contrary to God. And God is not pleased with a lot of things that are going on in Christianity. We have allowed the world, we have brought the world system into the church and we are calling it moves of the spirit. It is moves of the spirit, but it's not moves of the Holy Spirit. It is move of a familiar spirit, demonic spirit. And for those of you who are feeling some kind of way because of what I'm saying, friend, listen, Seek the face of God. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Come to know this God for real. Get acquainted with the word of God so that we're not led astray. And so I want to go to a familiar passage of scripture that I think most people have heard and most people uh, may even think they understand. It's when Jesus is talking to the woman at the well, he gets to a portion in John chapter 4, verse number 24, where he says this, friends, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Listen to this, my friends. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, first of all, we have to understand that means I can't worship God any way I want to, I can't do anything I choose and call it worshiping God. God is looking for true worshipers, my friend. He's looking for true, authentic worshipers. So to say that we are worshiping him in the spirit, he is saying right there, friend, that there's a, there's a particular part of man that God connects with. And it's not the flesh, it's the spirit. When God talks to us, God talks to us in the reality. He connects to us in the reality of who we are. Who is that, friend? Before you are soul and body, you are spirit. 
Before you are soul and body, friend, you are spirit. The spirit man is the real man. That's the man that God connects to. God is not connecting to, to my flesh. God is not dealing with me in the flesh realm, nor necessarily in the soulish realm. God connects to me in the reality of who I am, and that's in the spirit. And so the other thing that we see is in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth, that means to be sincere, sincere in my worship, that my worship is not motivated uh, by my own fleshly desires. My, my worship is not motivated by me setting up a platform and me being able to be seen by others. So God is a spirit, and those of us who worship him, friends, must worship him in spirit and in truth, doing it in the spirit. And let me say this to you. Everything that we do, beloved, everything we do is worship. Everything we do is as unto the Lord. And so we need to understand, friends, that we can't bring just anything in the church and then connect gospel to it. We can't just bring anything in, friends, and say, this is worship. Because God directs us by the Spirit. He lets us know what He expects of us when it comes to worshiping Him. We can't do it, friends, any way we choose to do it. And so God became flesh and dwelt among us that we would have a physical res uh, representation of who He is and was. Listen, friend. Even though he became flesh, uh, John chapter 1, verse number 14, John chapter 1, verse number 14, listen to what is recorded in John chapter 1 and verse number 14. We start out in the, in the scriptures where it said that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And in verse 14, friend, it says this, and the word, being God, was made flesh, watch this, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory. We beheld his glory, the only, I'm sorry, we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, full of grace and truth. Our God is the spirit, and those of us who worship him, friends, must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so we have to come to grips in what the truth is. And I've come to find out, friends, I've come to find out that we are very offended with the truth. I'm talking about the church. I'm not talking about the world, friend. I'm talking about the church. We are very offended by the truth. But, but we are taught that truth is what makes us free. Truth is what separates us, friends, from the rest of humanity and the rest of society, the rest of the world. Truth has made us free. It's the truth, friend, that we receive, the, the, the truth that we have respect for. Not just truth alone, it's the truth that I receive and believe is what makes me free. So truth, we, we have a problem with truth, and, and I know why we have a problem with truth, because, because it disturbs the flesh. It disturbs my flesh. And so anytime my emotion, my flesh uh, get disturbed, I get offended. And so it's amazing how easily the church is offended by truth, friends. My, my heart is really grieving over the condition of the church. We have allowed so much to come in. And we've done it on, on this basis, friends. We've done it because we say things like, well, we are doing this, watch this, to draw young people, or we, we are doing this to draw this dynamic of people, or we are doing it uh, to have this effect. But friend, the Bible says, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Not with gimmicks and props. Not with gimmicks and props, my friend. With love and kindness have I drawn thee. And so the same love and kindness that drew me, friend, will draw anybody no matter what their age is. So we don't need props and gimmicks to draw anybody because that's called deception. And so we hear things like, just get them in the church and then once we get them in there, let's preach the hell out of them. Well, friend, that don't work because if you bring them into where hell is because we've brought hell into the church, we are raising hell in the church. And we're calling it a move of God. We've bought worldly singing in the church. 
We, we've bought worldly uh, uh, behaviors. Uh, we've bought stepping. We've bought uh, dancing. Uh, uh, we, we bought all these different things in the church, friend, and we're calling it spirit. We're saying we're worshiping God with it. No, friends. No, friends. We're not worshiping God at all. We're not worshiping God at all. Miming, stepping, uh, a whole lot of the praise dancing is not even God. We, we calling it that, friends. We're calling it that. We're calling it that, friends. But it's just entertainment. It's a whole lot of entertainment going on in our walls, in the places we call our sanctuaries, and we're calling it worship, and it's not true worship at all, friend. I, I, I'm not here to be popular. I, I, I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to share truth because truth makes us free. And this is what the Holy Spirit put in me to say, friend. I'm going to teach this lesson. I'm going to teach this thing doing it in the Spirit. And what you do with it, friend, is totally up to you. It's not up to me what you do with this teaching, whether you decide to continue to listen to it or not, that is totally up to you. But we have to understand, friend, whether I decide to, to, to receive the truth and embrace the truth or not, I'm still going to be held accountable for my actions. Every deed done in this body, I got to give an account for. And the church, God is getting ready to hold the church accountable for the, the rottenness that's in the church that we are using, the things that we are using and calling it worship, we have allowed, we have given place to the devil, friend. We have really given place to the devil. And so we're raising hell in the church. There's, there's, there's fighting in the church. There's adultery in the church, fornication. All of these things are going on in the church, and we're running around talking about there's this super move of God, this powerful move of God, friend, and it's not a move of God at all. Not the real, true, and living God. Because if it was, friend, there would be a whole lot of changing going on in the church. I don't understand how, how we're, so, we're, we're doing this thing, we're calling it worship, uh, and, and we're talking about this powerful move of God is going on, but, but our people are constantly backsliding. Our people are constantly falling off the wagon. Our people are constantly having to rededicate their lives, and nobody's really getting healed, friend. Nobody's really getting delivered. Nobody's really getting set free, friend. That's how I know it's not true worship, friend, because there's no way that the Spirit of God, the glory of God is going to show up in a room and everybody leave the same way they came, friend. No, friend. No, that, that's not, that's not God because there's too many people coming to our midst, friend, and they leave lost, broken, sick, diseased. They leave the same way they came, friend. But we are running around shouting, we speaking in tongues, flopping all over the floor like fish out of water, friend. But there's really no real move of God. And we have opted, friend, we have opted for, for the, the appearance. And so we do things to make people think or believe that there's a great move of the Spirit going on. When there's really no Spirit moving, it's a Spirit, but it's not of God. And there's a lot of witchcraft, and I'm not here for you to like this, but there's a lot of witchcraft going on in the buildings. And God is holding us accountable. Leadership, God is holding you responsible. Doing it in the spirit. Our God is a spirit. And those of us who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We are spirit, soul, and body. We are spirit, soul, and body, friend. God is spirit, soul, and body. I, I, I'm going to help you with this if you just follow along. Be praying about what's going on. Sit still for a minute, friend. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the scripture. I'm going to use this Bible to, to back up everything that the Holy Spirit is saying. Our God, our God is a, a triune God, and he created us in his image and likeness. And he did that, friends, so that he could communicate with us. He wants to communicate with us, but God wants to co communicate with us, watch this, in spirit and in truth. And so God is a uh, spirit, soul, and body. Our God is a spirit. The Holy Spirit is his soul. 
Mm -hmm. And Jesus is his body. So we see that our God is a spirit. The Holy Spirit, what is it that the soul, because, because I got to break this down and I got to teach this right to us according to how the Holy Spirit is leading so that we understand what doing it in the Spirit is. All this have to be covered first, friend, before we can connect with what doing it in the Spirit really means. So our God is a spirit. His Holy Spirit is his soul. And then Jesus is his body. The Spirit is the real God, <clears throat> the God that, that's invisible that we haven't seen. But, but 1 John 1 and 14 says that God became a, he became a man. He, he, be, he became flesh and dwelt among us. The Holy Spirit, watch this, is the teacher. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. Uh, we, we're not making this up, friend. Let's go to John. Let me get over here to John for you because I... I my, my spirit is really, really hurting right now for us. Uh, in John chapter 14, verse number 26, friend, listen to what it says. Because I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with doing it in the spirit, but let's, let's get this locked down so we understand what it is. In, in John 14, verse 26, he says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, watch this, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now watch this. So the Holy Spirit is the teacher. The Holy Spirit teaches us things about God, reveal things to us about God. That's what the soulish realm do. It teaches people about who we are. It teaches people. And the body allow us to be seen. Watch, friend. And the body allow us to be seen. So the Spirit is the real person. The spirit of you is the real you. Your soul is the part of you that teaches people about you. Teach people what you like, what you don't like, what hurts and what makes you laugh, what feels good. All those things are taught to us by the soul or by the Holy Spirit. And the body is there so those things can be seen. And so the body is like a canvas for the soul or the Holy Spirit to express itself. Glory to God, pray for me, if you can. And so doing it in the Spirit, this is connecting us with the doing it in the Spirit and how that uh, uh, manifests, okay? And so you have to understand that our God is a Spirit, so He gave us a Spirit. That's the real us. And He gave us a Spirit so He can connect to us. He's not connecting to us in the flesh, friends. He's not connecting to us, so to say, in the soulish realm. But we both have a soul and we both have flesh. Mm -hmm. Because it took flesh for him to hang on a cross. This is doing it in the spirit, friend. This is explaining the doing it in the spirit. And so I have to be able to express, you have to be able to see what it is that I am saying to you. And that's what the soul does. And the body is like the canvas that everything shows up on because everything in the spirit is manifested in the physical. Come on, everything that's done in the spirit is manifested in the, in the physical. And so whether it's the Holy Spirit or an unclean or demonic spirit or familiar spirit, it is all going to manifest in the flesh what spirit it is. Try the spirit, friend. Test the spirit to see whether or not it is of God or not. And we have to stop turning a blind eye, friend, and we have to stop co-signing things that are not connected to the spirit of God, and we have to hold each other accountable, friends, for things that we are calling Holy Ghost that is not Holy Ghost at all. Your spirit is supposed to bear, bear witness to the Spirit of God. Mary walks into Elizabeth's house, and, and she, she, she speaks to her. Watch, friends, she speaks to her. And when Mary opens her mouth and speaks, Elizabeth, the baby, John inside of her, leaps. Elizabeth gets filled with the Holy Spirit, and she begins to talk to Mary about things only the Holy Ghost could have shown her. Now she calls Mary, watch, friend, now she calls Mary the mother of her Lord. How could she have known that? How could she have known that if the Holy Spirit himself hadn't revealed that to her? Who do they say that I, the son of man, am? Some say that you're a prophet, you're Elisha, you this, you that. And then he said, well, who, whom say you that I am? 
Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Watch, friend, watch this. That's a spiritual thing that's manifested in the flesh because watch what Jesus says. Flesh and blood haven't revealed this to you. Watch this. But my heavenly Father, watch this here, connected to your spirit and revealed that to you. Doing it in the spirit. Elizabeth, there's no way Elizabeth could have known what she said to Mary if it had not been the Holy Spirit connecting to her, revealing that to her. We're talking about doing it in the spirit, friend. We're talking about doing it in the spirit. But we can't expect people, friend, to do things in the spirit who are not in the spirit. We can't expect people to do things in the spirit who are not in the spirit, who are not connected to the Holy Spirit, because we're talking about the Holy Spirit, friend. We're not talking about just doing it in any spirit you desire because that's not pleasing to God. If, if we're talking about doing it in the spirit, if what we do is supposed to be of the spirit of God, then we need to be connected to the spirit of God to do it, friend. We can expect people who are not spiritually connected to do things in the spirit. We can't expect unsaved people to behave saved. But we can't expect people who are saved to live that way. God is holding us accountable, friend, doing it in the spirit. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about doing it in the spirit. If you would, uh, I want to go to Romans chapter 8 first. Romans chapter 8 starting at verse number 8. And I want to read uh, what Paul says in Romans chapter 8 starting at verse number 8. Follow me, friend, if you would. Follow me, if you would. I want to start at verse number eight. Listen to what the scripture says, friend. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. They that are in the flesh, friend, cannot please God. So there's a lot of flesh going on, friend. There's a lot of flesh going on. A lot of things done in the flesh, in the church, and we calling it the spirit. And we think we please in God with that. And God is not pleased with that, friend, at all. Can I say that again? He's not pleased with you and me being in the flesh, doing things in the flesh at all. Because anything and everything I do in the flesh, I'm doing for my own self-gratification. And God is not pleased with that. Or I'm doing it to, to please some other man. And God is not pleased with that, my friend. Verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Talking about Christians. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Watch this. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You see that, friend? We're talking about doing it in the spirit. He said, and if, if the person, listen, listen. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The first thing he talked about, friend, in verse number eight, he said that we cannot please God in the flesh. And there's a lot of flesh in the church, and we calling it the spirit of God. We calling it the move of God. He said, no, no, friend, no, you can't please me in the flesh. But then he says this, friend, verse nine, but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit. You see, friend, God see us in the spirit. So why are we in the flesh so much if God is seeing us in the spirit? Why are we in the flesh so much? Why are we catering to the flesh so much, friend, if we are in the spirit? Those of us who are born again, we are in the spirit. Watch. If so, be that the spirit of God dwells in you. If the spirit of God dwells in you, friend, you shouldn't be doing things in the flesh or cosigning fleshly things. Watch this now. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Okay, so if he don't have or she don't have the spirit of God, she's not of God, don't belong to God, so I cannot expect that person to do it in the spirit. Glory to God. 
Come on, come on, pray for me, friends, if you can. Can't expect you or the person to do things in the Spirit if they don't have the Spirit of God. And we're going to deal, friend, with how we get to the place to where we're in the Spirit. That's another area, God, uh, friends, that, that we are very confused in how it is that we get into the Spirit and how is it that we, we uh, possess the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. There's such a, a, a vast confusion in the church. And I'm not understanding if we all have the Holy Spirit. There's only one. If we all have the Holy Spirit, why are we so divided in that? Why are we so divided when it comes to doing things in the Spirit? That's because we're all not operating in the Holy Spirit. That's why, friend. Because we're not all operating in the Holy Spirit. And if we don't have His Spirit, friend, we are not of Him. And we'll do things, the fruit, the fruit that we bear will indicate that we're not of him. And friend, there's a lot going on in churches right now that's not of God. And so there's the, re the revelation that a lot of places, friends, I'm not talking about anybody. I'm, I'm teaching the truth. A lot of things are going on in buildings, friend. And the fruit of it is showing me that it's not of God at all. It's not of God at all. Friends, if you're having a problem, if you're having a problem with what God is saying right now, what the Holy Spirit is saying right now, then seek the face of God for it, friend. Seek the face of God for it. I'm the kind of person that I'm okay with the truth. I will receive truth from anybody that's speaking it. I don't care who's speaking it. If it's truth, it's truth. And I'm okay with the truth. And the church needs to be okay with the truth. We need to stop being so offended when people tell us the truth. My time is drawing now, friend, and I so appreciate you allowing me to be in your life today and in your space today. Thank you for sharing your space with me today. I pray that God has said something to you, the Holy Spirit has said something to you that has quickened your spirit, that's given you an aha moment because you're trying to figure out why certain things are happening, certain things are not happening in the church. That's why, friend, because we're not doing it in the right spirit. That's why there's so much bickering and fighting, not the unity that God came to give because of that. So, friend, listen, until we meet again, friend, listen, I'm, 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 I want to pray for you, and I want you to know if you're viewing this telecast, I'm praying for you. And I thank you, all of you that are encouraging me and telling me how much you love and appreciate the program. If you can pray for me, friend, please pray for me and for this broadcast. It's for you. It is for you. I'm just the messenger. I'm just the one that's been called to deliver the message to your friend. May God bless you and may God keep you, my friend. It's truly my prayer for you. Fall in love with Jesus, friend, and fall in love with this word. Until we meet again, it's been Bishop John R. Stevenson. I love you to life. Bye-bye, friend. Bye-bye. People all over this world, yeah, people all over this world, say people all over this world, they're looking for Jesus.